Today, Hard Talk is on the road in Juba, South Sudan. Just three years ago, this city was full of hope as people celebrated the birth of Africa's newest nation. Well, today, much of that hope has turned to fear because this country is in the grip of a brutal struggle between the president and his former deputy. It is a conflict which has threatened to spread terror and ethnic hate throughout South Sudan. So why have things here gone so wrong so quickly? It was a long march to freedom in South Sudan. In Juba, they commemorate every step. After a war with Khartoum that cost many thousands of lives, the Sudan People's Liberation Army became the guardian of national unity, a blend of South Sudan's many tribes. The cowboy-hatted president, Salva Kiir, was drawn from the majority Dinka people. His deputy was from the Nua, the second biggest tribe. South Sudan was to be their shared identity. But last December, the president accused Nua troops of mounting a coup backed by the recently dismissed vice president. The Nua claimed they were the victims of an ethnic assault, and as the fighting spread, civilians paid the price. The killing was ethnically targeted. Dinka killing Nua, Nua killing Dinka. From Juba to the towns of Bor and Bentiu, reports emerged of civilian massacres which revived dark memories of Rwanda's genocide. Ceasefires have been attempted, but the latest, signed in Addis Ababa, failed to end the violence. Riek Machar is the leader of South Sudan's rebels. Fired from the vice presidency, he accused President Salva Kiir of being a dictator. I met him in the Ethiopian capital. Riek Machar, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Let's talk about your own political ambitions. You've said that Salva Kiir, in your view, is and it seems will remain illegitimate. Is it your intention to push for a return to your old job as vice president? What do you want? We, we want to negotiate. We want to find a solution to the conflict. It's, uh, the solution will not be military. It will have to be a political settlement negotiated. So you're prepared to still work with this man, Salva Kiir, as president of South Sudan? We, we, we will negotiate. On the table. Well, that is not a negotiating point, is it? Salva Kiir is the president of South Sudan, and I just want to know. Well, for you the are... time being, he is, okay? But to us, he is an illegitimate president. Let's talk about your responsibilities. Are you prepared to take responsibility for perhaps the single worst atrocity during the conflict? That is, your forces going into the town of Bentiu the northern oil town of Bentiu on April 15th, and according to all of the reports, independent reports, being responsible for the massacre of hundreds of civilians. I've heard of the incident. We have discussed it as a movement. We have decided to investigate it because it is also disputable, but all in all, we say we must investigate such incident. Investigate, you say. We're talking about April 15th. Here we sit, best part of a month later. You must have read the UN and the Amnesty International reports based on interviews with a multitude of people who catalog how armed men, again, answerable to you, went into a Catholic church, went into a mosque, went into a hospital, 
and killed civilians having established their ethnic identities. This investigation of yours, you must know whether that is true. No, I don't know. I don't know that it is true because there can be also other facts besides this. I acknowledge that something that I myself would not accept has happened in Bentiu. But why are you only talking about Bentiu and Bor, and you're not talking of what happened in Juba, which was administered by the president, by President Salfakir, in the eyes of the international community, where 20,000 people of one ethnic group were killed, massacred, buried in mass graves. Why are you not talking about that? So are you saying to me you will never accept Salva Kiir as legitimate president of South Sudan he has again? Lost, he has lost his legitimacy. He is destroying South Sudan. He is dividing South Sudan. After five months of brutal civil conflict, the world's youngest country is fast becoming one of the most traumatized. This is the Tongping camp for displaced civilians. It's overcrowded, insanitary, and in the words of the UN official in charge, a death trap. But almost 20,000 newer civilians refuse to leave because of one overwhelming factor, fear, born of terrible experience. You say your eldest daughter saw her father being shot dead. What impact has it had on her and the rest of the children? The UN is protecting and policing almost 100,000 displaced civilians in camps across South Sudan. In all, a million people have been made homeless. A toxic cocktail of ethnic suspicion, anger and accusation has seeped into the soil of this new nation. Yes, I did. I did. How many? In the camp, I met Main Kong. Till five months ago, he was a senior official in the president's office. Now he sits in a tent with nothing. The killing is only that we are killing no tribe. Ethnic cleansing? Ethnic cleansing, like what happened in Rwanda. Your house is literally Next. Th three minutes walk from yes. where we are sitting now Absolutely. in the UN camp. Absolutely. Why do you not go home now? Because if I go home, they will kill me. They will kill me. You make it sound like this country has already sunk into tribal warfare. Absolutely, tribal warfare. It is it. This is it. But when, you, when you speak like this, you sound like a man who, if you had a gun, would go out of this camp and try to kill Dinka people. No, I'm which not makes going the to world, kill. Makes the I'm war. not going to kill. I'm not going to kill what I'm going to tell to our leaders himself, President Salfakir. He had to come down. If he's not coming down, this war will never stop. If you see an unwell young man outside, he will tell you the same thing. He had to come down, and then we have to elect another president for our country. That will unite us. Juba, South Sudan's rickety capital, is today relatively calm. 
but the violence that swept through the city five months ago has left an indelible mark. I've driven for 30 minutes out of central Juba. This is the suburb of Mangatain. And it was here five months ago that government security forces moved in against rebels from the Nuer tribe. And many Nuer residents here were killed. We don't know how many. Those who survived fled, which is why this suburb is now virtually deserted. In Juba's majority newer neighborhoods, shops, homes, and streets are eerily empty. I went to the property belonging to Main Kong, the newer official who used to work in the president's office. The length of the grass, one sure sign that no one had lived here for months. Mangaten feels alarmingly like a neighborhood that has been ethnically cleansed, though it's hard to get anyone to talk. Why, why did they damage the houses here and the shops? I think these houses were... Actually, some of these houses were damaged by winds and sometime when the but crisis what, the was army, there... The army was here, right? Uh, yeah, the army was here for security purposes those days. There were many people killed here. No, because I, I'm also new here. But I know if many people were killed, I'm not aware. But I, it is what we hear. You say you're new here. Yeah, I'm new here. You just moved in. Yeah, because I came from far. I was here and I went somewhere. I came back. You came back? Yes. And you are Dinka? Yeah, I'm a Dinka. Yeah. But the new air, they're not here. I'm, uh, I'm not seeing, but not because they are not yes. here, but I'm not seeing any. Why do you think they're not here? Do you think they're frightened? Hmm? They are frightened, the new way. Oh, no, I don't know because uh, I, I actually, I have no answer. But the worst fallout from South Sudan's descent into violence is being felt in the countryside. The fighting has forced subsistence farmers off the land. Most of this year's seed was left unplanted. Aid supply lines have been cut and a humanitarian catastrophe looms. The only way to keep hundreds of thousands of people alive is by dropping emergency food supplies by air. But it's 10 times more expensive to deliver aid by plane rather than truck. Unless international donors come up with hundreds of millions of dollars now, this emergency airlift could grind to a halt within a month. The UN is warning of a famine that could be as bad as Ethiopia's three decades ago. Hilda Johnson, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. It seems to me you neither have the mandate nor the forces to intervene in any meaningful way in the conflict which is unfolding here. So this is a peacekeeping operation, which means it's here to support peace. Right, so the mandate and is redundant. It is not an intervention mission, which is, implies intervening in a conflict um, which is ongoing between two parties. So the mandate has to change if you are to have relevance here. The mandate is under review by the Security Council, and uh, the Security Council will have to decide what to do in the current situation. You know, given what is happening in this country, we're talking about a period from late December to now when the conflict has spread and it has spiraled, and yet the Security Council can't actually deliver on a promise to give you more troops. It is the member states and the troop contributing countries uh, that are within the peacekeeping missions that would have had to respond to our cry for more resources. And yes, it is uh, a desperate need on our part. We are overstretched as a mission. We really need all the resources we can get, both on the military side and the police side, to face the challenge we're in the middle of. Every camp that you've set up tends to reflect what you have called a an ethnic violence in this country which threatens to spiral out of control. Is the danger not that, that 
by acting as you do and offering refuge, understandably offering refuge in, in the spirit of humanitarianism, you are part of the entrenching of this ethnic warfare and ethnic cleansing in South Sudan. If we hadn't opened our gates and given refuge to these people, it is very likely they would have been killed. It's very likely that the cycle of violence would have spun out of control to a much larger extent than what we have seen so far. Every independent expert believes that a massive humanitarian hunger-based crisis is facing South Sudan. How seriously are you taking that threat? Very seriously. If critical actions are not taken now, money is not coming in to fund the humanitarian operations now, access is not provided to all corners of the affected population in South Sudan, we are likely to see um, a devastating hunger situation towards the end of the year. You have used the word famine. And we can also face famine. Uh, this the worst famine you said in Africa since the 1980s is looming in, here. In the region, in the region and in South Sudanese history. That is the risk we're facing and that is why we are sounding the alarm bells. If there's anything we should do, it is to stand up and support these suffering people. They've suffered for far too long through a civil war and now they're there again. Let us now mobilize everything we can to help them while there is still time. We're running out of time, in fact. For now, the relief planes are still flying. Mass starvation remains a grim prospect, not current reality. But in South Sudan, the margin between life and death is perilously thin and getting thinner. For President Salva Kiir, the mismatch between the high hopes of independence three years ago and the despair of today could hardly be starker. Okay. President Salva Kiir, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you very much. Mr. President, where is this conflict going from here? The ceasefire does not appear to be working and there seems to be a, a real danger. This country is descending into total civil war. I don't believe that we can slide into civil war because uh, it is not the two sides that are on offensive. It is only one side which is on offensive. That is the side of Yirkmachar. You characterize this as a conflict instigated by Yirkmachar. But the truth is, right now, this looks like a conflict between tribes with deep ethnic hatred fueling the fighting? Well, uh, it is him who have actually incited the Nuer against Dinkas. But on our side, we have never done that. The hatred, yes, has been planted in them by Riek Machar. And we, on our side, always diffuse it. We tell people, no, Mr. there President, is no revenge. The facts don't appear to bear that out. The first serious outrageous acts of violence based on ethnicity appear to have taken place here in Juba right after December 15th. We have reports backed by evidence from the United Nations and Amnesty International of your troops going into neighborhoods in this city, seeking out newer men, taking them to security facilities and murdering them. When I got the information, that there was killings going on in the estates around Juba. I set up a commission and then I sent in troops to arrest whoever that has taken law into his own hand. But with and respect, people, it was the security forces who were doing the killing the based law, on ethnicity, the, the, your security forces. I don't, I, don't, I don't think, but I am not defending them. I say law does not know whom you are. If the security forces were involved in that, they must be punished for their actions. Well, let's not say if. All of the evidence, including an extensive UN report, says you your forces were responsible. Will you accept that? I will not accept until they are investigated and then it is confirmed. 
because we have the fighting, we also have a massive humanitarian crisis developing in I South Sudan. I agree with you. I spoke to the director of the World Food Programme. He said it is no longer a question of whether people die of hunger in South Sudan. It is a question of how many. He is concerned that your government doesn't understand how serious the situation is. No, we understand. It is a, a man-made disaster. And this is why we want the war to stop, so that we allow the humanitarian access to everybody in the country. The civil population is going to face one of the worst famines that has ever been witnessed in, in South Sudan. We have to stop this fighting so that we save the people's life, the people to not, not, not to die of hunger. Hilda Johnson suggested to me that in the next few weeks the UN must make a crucial decision whether to strengthen the mandate of the thousands of peacekeeping troops who are here. And there is discussion of a stronger mandate, giving them more uh, ability to intervene in this conflict. Would you support that? Uh, you know, the, the problem with the, with the UN missions in South Sudan is that they have no capacity even to defend themselves, leave alone you know, intervening to, to protect the civilians. So why are they here? South Sudan is not going to be taken over by foreign forces in the name of the United Nations. As for hopes, I still hope that South Sudan, if there is no conflict today, we were progressing very, very smoothly and very rapidly, could catch up again. Well, with, with respect, Mr. President, you weren't. You yourself wrote a letter to all of your ministers decrying systematic corruption. You said $4 billion had gone missing. You said to your own ministers, we cannot continue in this way. Your own office, the office of the president, was investigated. Two of your most senior officials were accused of systematic corruption. With respect, I come back to the same point. Do you really believe you are the man to get South Sudan out of this crisis? Not me to say that I am. It is not me. When I, ca when I came to this office, they elected me. I did not come in by through bullets. I came in by votes of the people of South Sudan. And you still believe you can pull this country back from the brink? I believe so. If these people you know, do not stab me from the back, I can pull this country out of where it is now. South Sudan is at a tipping point. If the violence continues, ethnic divisions will deepen many thousands will succumb to starvation. Africa's youngest nation might not survive its infancy.